So do you want to instantly improve your strength, speed, and power? Well, check out Agonist Antagonist Training. Hey, what's up everybody? Jason Kelly here, exercise physiologist for 24 years and creator of The Balanced Body. Hope everybody's having a great day today. In today's video, I'm going to show you the power of agonist and antagonist training, how it will help you boost your strength instantly. But before I begin, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel so you can receive future notifications based on more strength, fitness, and health techniques. So first of all, what is agonist and antagonist training? Well, agonist and antagonist training means basically you have your agonist, if your back is doing the motion, then your chest is the antagonist. If your chest is doing the motion, it's, it is the agonist, and then your back becomes the antagonist. But this really works when you use uh, one muscle in, that is stronger than the other. So for instance, your back rows, you should be stronger with your back than your chest presses. And so when you do agonist work with your back and work with the antagonist of the chest afterwards, it'll help make your chest press stronger and faster. Let me give you a little bit more of an explanation as well as a demonstration. So when you are doing your back row, when you row up, that is the concentric work. And when you release the, the row back down to the ground, that is the eccentric work. And so if you think about it, what works eccentrically in your back row is the concentric part of your chest press, okay? And so a lot of the yielding work, a lot of the stimulation comes in your eccentric training, your eccentric motion. And so when you really work slow in your eccentric motion of your back row, that eccentric motion helps to stimulate the concentric motion of your chest press. And so that's why you're stronger and faster with your chest press when you do your back row first and your chest press second. It might not work if you do your chest press first because the first exercise has to be heavier in weight. And usually your, your back should be stronger than your chest press, and so therefore it works in this very good uh, mythology, this very good technique. And so it's the same thing with your lat pull down and your shoulder press. You should be, it should be a lot harder to do a lat pull down or pull ups than shoulder presses. But what you will find is that if you do a single arm lat pull, a double lat pull, pull ups, and then do your shoulder presses afterwards, you'll be stronger and faster as well as more explosive in your presses. And so that's how agonist antagonist uh, works in, in this type of strength method. It's, it really works well for your upper body because you really need the same lines of motion to be exact. And so, you know, your lat pull is this way and your shoulder press is that way. Your back row is this way and your chest press is that way. So you can really be, it really needs to be exact in its lines of motion in order to make agonist and antagonist work function effectively. So you can do it with your legs, there's ways of doing it, but it really, like I said, this is basically what I do for my upper body work, and it works well. It works well not just, not just for strength and conditioning and strength training, but it works well in the functional world too, because if I reach for a cup, I have to pull the cup back to drink it, right? So, and if I reach up for something like a, uh, a bag of sugar, I have to bring that bag of sugar back down. So you can see it works well in the functional world. Nothing is ever just like one movement. It's always one movement back, one movement back. So that's what you have to understand. So it works well in a functional world. It works excellent in the sports realm. And it just works well if you're trying to develop your strength and conditioning too. And so how does this work? So basically what you want to do, there's a couple different ways you can do this. So if you're doing your back row, you can do your back row uh, with five repetitions and just working on those five repetitions, three to five repetitions at your normal pace speed. Or you could work more on an eccentric level, meaning that you can work slowly, eccentrically, fast, concentrically. Slow, concentrically, and fast, concentrically. This is for the first exercise. 
So you can work this pattern in two different ways. Because if you're doing slow eccentric work, you're building up this energy, this elastic energy into the muscle that's going to affect and be good for your chest press. And so that would be the first exercise. And now for your second exercise, when you do your chest press from the back row, you're gonna take your five rep max of your chest press. And so when you do your chest press, you should notice that you can do about seven reps or that's a speed that you can do uh, your chest press much faster. You will notice a difference in strength or speed when you do your chest press based on your five rep max. So that should tell you that you should be doing a little bit more in your repetitions. And so the same goes for your lat pull. If you're doing a lat pull or pull ups and then you do your shoulder presses, you should notice that your shoulder presses are faster and more explosive as well as stronger. Like I said, you'll see one of, one of the things occur. It's kind of hard because I don't know where you are with your strength training. I don't know what kind of training you do prior to this type of training, but that's what will happen. You'll get one of these three, three one of these few things that will happen in your, uh, in your results of agonist and antagonist training. And so with your lat pull, like I said, if you do five, you can do your lat pulls the same way. The first exercise, you can do your five rep max, or you can do the slow eccentric type of work for three to five reps. And then basically you wanna rest about 10 to 20 seconds. You don't have to go right into that next exercise. Rest about 10 to 20 seconds, and then you can push out, you can do your shoulder presses. And again, work with your five rep max on your shoulder press, and you should notice the same thing. You have a stronger shoulder press where you're gonna do more repetitions like seven. Uh, you'll be faster in your shoulder press and more explosive. So one of these things will occur. And so one of the things not to do, because if you do this, then it will not work, is that if you don't, if you take, if you do your training and you try to do more and you start to force reps in a slow, in a slow way, then it will not work in the agonist and antagonist work. It has to be your five reps where you stay fresh on the pyramid on top going up to stimulate your strength and not come down. That's a downfall in a lot of methods and techniques and why they don't work for people because they think, well, I just do more. No. Oh, I'll just, I'll do it to the last rep. No, because you're activating the GTOs, uh, these Golgi tendon organs that will actually stop you from exercising or stop your muscle from working because the weight is getting too heavy. That's not the point you wanna be at. You wanna be at the point where you hit it at the apex and then transfer it into the next exercise. This is how a lot of strength methods work. And if you think about this type of way of working, of not forcing it to the last rep, you will actually be stronger and actually through all of your sets, be able to push maximal repetitions and not limited repetitions. I'll go into that to another, another video. <clears throat> hey, thanks for watching and I hope you really enjoyed this video on agonist and antagonist training. And I hope it really works for you to develop your strength and how you can see it can develop your strength, speed and explosiveness quickly. Make sure you check out my other videos as well and have a great day.